This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening. A several hour long standoff with police in Jamestown today ended with 41 year old Kevin Garnica in custody. Many homes and a nearby daycare were evacuated. Valley News team's Alex Larson spoke with neighbors to get the story. Terry Bell and his wife got a knock on their apartment door Thursday morning. The guy come over and told me we need to evacuate. And he said there was a shooter down the street, but we figured if he was down the street, we kind of didn't have nowhere to go, so we just stayed at the house. The problem was closer than down the street. Police say in the neighboring apartment, a woman had just escaped after 41 year old Kevin Garnica held her against her will. Then police say Garnica barricaded himself inside with a knife and a gun just before 11 a.m. We figured we made a mistake. <laughs> we should all have. Bell says once he and his wife realized what was going on, they put as many walls between themselves and the action as they could while staying as close to the front of their home as possible. So that way we kept watching where the police was moving to and, you know, what they was doing. So. Police say Garnica made threats over recent weeks that he would injure or kill law enforcement. And he had warrants out for his arrest in Pierce County. They used a robot to bring him a phone and establish contact. But then... I don't know, about almost noon, I guess we heard like four shots come from one of the officers and then it was quiet for several hours after that. Police say just before 2 p.m. Garnica tried to run with a large knife but went back inside of the apartment. Right before 4.30, police used tear gas and pepper spray to get him to surrender. In Jamestown, Alex Larson, Valley News Live. Garnica and several other officers were treated at the scene for exposure to gas and Garnica was taken to a local medical center for treatment of his minor injuries. Police say reports are being forwarded to the Stutzman County State's Attorney for formal charges. All right, switch gears now. Take a look outside where we had a beautiful day today, though hot, not too far from here. First alert storm team forecaster Summer Schnellbach joins us now with details. Summer. Thank you so much and good evening everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday night. Just a few high level clouds. That's about the only weather in our neck of the woods. It's been a very quiet day. Temperatures now no longer quite so sizzling, but still on the warm side, still 85 degrees in Bismarck. They hit a high temperature today of 103 degrees, just shy of record. Meanwhile, cooler in northern Minnesota, 69 right now in Bemidji, 70 in Thief River Falls, Roseau, Baudette, Hallock, Langdon, and Wadena popular number this evening. We're at 75 here in Fargo. We have had some breezy southerly winds today. They've calmed down a little bit at this hour, still a little on the breezy side, but not quite as gusty. Those winds will pick up again tomorrow, but for tonight expect clear skies to continue and temperatures to remain fairly steady in the 70s, so it's going to be a warm evening ahead. We do have a first alert weather day in place for tomorrow. We're looking at another day with gusty south winds ushering in more heat, more humidity, and we have the possibility of some strong to severe thunderstorms. So I'll have your hour by hour details, just how hot we're going to get in some areas and what kind of hazards we might expect if any of those storms do become severe here in just a little bit. All right, thanks so much, Summer. That is the sound of shots being fired inside the Mall of America this evening, leading to a mall wide lockdown. We now know no one was hurt in that shooting. Bloomington police say two groups started fighting in the Nike store. One group left, but then turned around, they say, and fired shots back inside that store. Witnesses describe the chaos. We were about to go to the Nike store and we saw, we just heard a lot of commotion and then we just look over and when we look over, we just heard pop, pop, pop. And we just all, everybody started ducking and running. We heard about four or five shots, uh, women screaming. And then all of a sudden we heard, saw everybody running out. So we just ran out, followed the crowd. Police say no one is in custody right now, but the mall will reopen tomorrow with increased security. 
A lawsuit is now going to trial for the family of a young girl who took her own life at Fargo, North Dakota Boys and Girls Ranch in 2018. The family of Aliana Roberson is suing the ranch as well as two staff members individually on counts of amendment violations, civil rights violations and liability. The complaint states Roberson had previous suicide attempts before arriving at the ranch and she was deemed high risk for suicidal tendencies by professionals at the ranch. The complaint says despite this, staff members allowed her to go into a bathroom alone the night she died. The complaint says ranch staff displayed pointed indifference and made no effort to find out what she brought with her into the bathroom, also saying they knew about a suicidal note that she'd left on her bed. North Dakota Supreme Court has issued its ruling on an appeal made by a man charged with the murder of two people. Salama Pendleton was charged with killing his own mother and Grand Forks police officer Cody Holty in May of 2020. He was convicted last year on two counts of murder, two counts of attempted murder, terrorizing, reckless endangerment, and possession with intent to deliver marijuana. Pendleton argued in his appeal multiple stances, including that his constitutional right to a public trial was violated, that his right to be physically present at that trial was violated, and that he was convicted of a non-cognizable offense. In the new ruling, the court rejected most of Pendleton's arguments. However, they did order Pendleton to be resentenced on the drug charge. We now know the location of the new home of the Red River Women's Clinic. The Fargo Clinic is moving a little more than two miles away to 302 Highway 75 North and Moorhead. Abortion will remain legal in Minnesota for the time being after North Dakota's trigger law goes into effect banning the procedure in North Dakota. That abortion ban is now set to take effect on August 26th. The Minnesota Department of Health is releasing its first ever maternal mortality report. It found the state's overall maternal mortality rate to be much lower than the nation's average, but the health department says it shows stark racial disparities. For example, black Minnesotans make up 13% of those giving birth, but 23% of pregnancy-associated deaths. Native American Minnesotans represent 2% of those giving birth, but 8% of pregnancy-associated deaths. We're very um, hopeful that this report will sort of lead to more conversations about elevating the need of supporting birthing people. We really need to invest in services and educating providers, making sure providers have all the tools that they need. In other news, more traffic issues on I-94 in the metro. There's now a closure in the westbound lanes in Moorhead, so heading towards Fargo. Crews will be removing concrete barriers and barrels along the road overnight. The eastbound lane will have a closure around the 34th Street and County Road 52 exits through Saturday. Then another round of closures begin next week, both directions near the Moorhead Airport exit. Country group Lady A is postponing a series of concerts across the country, including in Fargo, September 30th at Shields Arena and in Minot the night before, saying lead singer Charles Kelly has embarked on a journey to sobriety. No word yet on a new date. Local families looking to keep the memory of their two young boys alive through a toy drive. Nine-year-old Camden and one-year-old Maxwell were killed when a semi struck their mom's SUV near the Reynolds exit. The fourth annual Cam Cares Toy Drive benefits at Sanford Children's Hospital, Essentia Children's, and the YWCA of Cass Clay. I mean, my boys aren't here, but I want their hearts to live on, and I want kindness and compassion and for people to think about other people and to get their kids involved, too, to teach them about um, the needs of other people and not just ourselves. There are several drop-off locations, including Maple Family Dental, Four Star Ninja Gym, or Ninja Academy. We have a full list on our website, bellynewslive.com. Friends, family, and baseball fans gathered tonight to help send one of our local teams to their version of the World Series. The Fargo 61's 13U team held a fundraiser at Rowe Farm with all proceeds going toward travel expenses for their trip to the Babe Ruth League World Series. Having their parents in the stands is a big support for them. Uh, kind of, you play for your teammates, teammates and uh, your team, your coaches, but you also play for your parents and try to make them proud as well. So it's a big boost seeing them in the stands. Good luck to them. The event starts in about a week in Virginia. 